G'day folks. Well, for today's equipment autopsy we have a Ajax Pumps uh, fire system priming system or for fire sprinkler systems. Uh, this would be installed in a large building with the little uh, thermal glass based um, sprinkler heads and this is a priming and monitoring system. This bit here is a priming pump. I think it goes up to about 150 psi or so. Or I think set pressure on this is 150 pounds. Uh, it's designed to maintain pressure. This counts how many times the pump starts. If it starts too often it means there's a leak or another issue. Someone's using water off the system. Uh, so this is all automatic. This just sits uh, either locked out and not used or commissioned when there's a test to be done or some kind of system check but I imagine it'd normally stay on. Right now it's off, but with the valve open, that would keep this pump connected to the system at 150 pounds or whatever that's supposed to be set to. So it's part of the management system. I'll open that up and have a closer look at it. But I've got a control cabinet. I found a few uh, bits and pieces in there. That's got details on the uh, flow switch were mold fire protection systems. Very big reputable name in Australia. Switchboard room conduit. It's a bit hard to tell what they're written there, but there's another one there about battery and all that sort of stuff. I think. Yeah. Starter, battery pump, alarm bell, solenoid valves. Yeah. It's just a circuit diagram for what they've built. Earth required on transformer? Question mark. Well, that's sort of where the failures occurred in this. That transformer's melted down. The secondary's all loose and melted out. And she's had a serious overload or short. Probably a short circuit. The rectifier doesn't look too good either, so I'm wondering if the rectifier's gone short. There's a fuse on here, but that's for something else. That goes through a little 8 amp contactor. And it's a 10 amp ceramic fuse. It's a large rotary switch, 32 amp Krauss and Namia rotary switch, but there's no coupling bar to go with it. So there's supposed to be a coupler that mounts on the back panel, and there's a coupling bar that goes through to here, but I don't have it, so I can't use it have to make something up but it is it is all there and all this stuff appears to be 12 volts so that's a really nice score my neighbor gave me this stuff his uh, nephew is a fire systems engineer so I'm always getting old pressure gauges and sprinkler heads and things off him it's nice having neighbors that look after you <laughs> despite all the noise and carnage I often create they love it they don't mind so yeah, there's a nice big contactor there. It looks like a 25 amp contactor. It's an old one, but it's still good. It's got a 240 volt coil in it. But yeah, that 12 volt transformer is completely nuked. It's gone. A little control board in there. Some fairly old componentry on there. This is probably 1970s. Although the switch, yeah, the selector switch is a bit newer. It's got battery condition meter. Various indicators. Yeah, I like that. Charging. Yeah, so even if the power goes down, the fire system can still function. There would have been another part of this system that probably looked like a UPS, and that was its backup, unless the batteries are installed in here. But then, no, that's where that's where the main switch went. So there's no room for batteries in here. There would have been a separate cabinet. So let's get some of this stripped out and have a close look at that. All right, well, there's plenty of nice little indicator lamps on here. Some of it's 24 volt stuff, which is a bit odd considering that says 12 volt. But who knows, that might be why they killed it. They put the wrong uh, transformer in there and tried to run the whole lot off 12. But either way, these uh, lamps will just push out. Or they should, so they don't get stuck. No voltage markings, but I'll try them on 12 volts first and then maybe 
24. Either way, it's all low voltage. It's pretty good. I'll pull that contactor out and scrap the rest. The old barrier strips, terminal strips aren't really worth keeping. I've already got a million of them. That little brass neutral bar will be handy though. I'll keep that. Maybe the cube relay that's in there. I don't know. I think I've already got a million of them. Don't know if the rotary switch is worth keeping since I don't have the uh, the rest of the uh, system for it. So I think that can stay there. Anyway, I'll pull the rest of it out. Okay, so control's pretty simple on this system. It's just a pressure differential. There's nothing special in here. You got automatic which locks in the normally open switch so that's now closed or manual you can switch it over and push it past and toggle toggle manual only it doesn't lock in the counters pretty straightforward it's just a cycle timer or sorry cycle counter pretty easy and that's just a differential switch it's set to uh, stop the pump at 150 psi and start the pump at 135 psi when it drops back down so if I were to plug it in now it would run because it's at 0 psi but if this was hooked up to the discharge of that on an accumulator or a system this will cut the pump out as soon as it reaches 150 pounds and it'll cut it back in at 130 so it's not a bad idea I wonder how much volume this thing could handle it might make a nice garden hose pump because uh, our mains about 90 to 100 psi as it is, but 150 psi means you don't really need a gurney to do most cleaning, even though it helps to have a thousand to two thousand psi water pressure with a pressure washer. Uh, 150 pounds is usable as a uh, decent wa garden hose pressure. So yeah, it's not a bad little score that one. Anyway, I'll. Uh, well, my neighbour wants the base back. He wants to put something else on it, so you can have the base. I'll just strip this off, clean it up, and uh, put it into storage for the time being. I might mount this on the wall somewhere, probably up at the house, against the wall near the tap, and actually connect it up and just see what it can do. I'll keep the pressure um, switch and everything on there. I wonder how, it'd be interesting to test how high higher pressure this pump can go to. I'm guessing it'll go more than 100. I'm oh, sorry, more than 150. The regulator or the switch cuts out at 300 that's pretty good but the pump's probably not capable of doing that so you send it back to 150 and that's the differential cut out so you have it cut stop at 150 cut in at 100 or in this case I think it's 135 which is a reasonable drop it's a 15 pound drop so yeah interesting all the goodies that get thrown out it's a bit of a shame really all this stuff was going in the bin and my neighbour saved it so it's worth keeping <laughs> half a Mac Union still on it anyway thanks for watching I'm going to put this stuff away and get on to tidying up